The specter of communism did not disappear with the disintegration of the Communist Party in Eastern Europe. The collapse of the communist regimes in the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe marked the end of a half-century-long Cold War between the capitalist and communist camps in the East and West. Many were thus optimistic, holding the belief that communism had become a relic of the past. The sad truth, however, is that a stealthily transformed communist ideology has instead taken hold and entrenched itself around the world. There are the outright communist regimes like China, North Korea, Cuba, and Vietnam. There are the former Soviet Union and Eastern European countries, where communist ideology and customs still exert a significant influence. There are the African and South American countries, which attempt socialism under the banner of democracy and republicanism. And then there are the nations of Europe and North America, whose body politics have become host to communist influences without people even realizing it. Communism breeds war, famine, slaughter, and tyranny. These in themselves are terrifying enough, but the damage dealt by communism goes far beyond this. It has become increasingly clear to many that, unlike any other system in history, what communism declares war on is humanity itself, including human values and human dignity. Over the course of a century, communism established massive dictatorships in the Soviet Union and China. It caused more than 100 million unnatural deaths. It enslaved billions, and it brought the world to the brink of nuclear war and thus destruction. Yet more important is its deliberate and widespread destruction of the family, its instigation of social disorder, and its attack on morality, all of which are ruinous to the foundations of civilization. What then is the nature of communism? What is its objective? Why does it take mankind as its enemy? How can we escape it? 1. Communism is a devil bent on the destruction of humanity. The Communist Manifesto begins, quote, A specter is haunting Europe, the specter of communism. The use of the term specter was not a whim of Karl Marx. The preface of this book argues that communism should not be understood as being an ideological movement, a political doctrine, or a failed attempt at a new way of ordering human affairs. Instead, it should be understood as being a devil, an evil specter forged by hate, degeneracy, and other elemental forces in the universe. The communist specter took the form of a serpent, then that of a red dragon, and it keeps company with Satan, who hates God, and exploits low-level beings and demons to wreak havoc on man. The goal of the specter is to ruin humanity, and while the divine offers salvation to humanity, communism tells man not to believe, attacks human morality so as to renounce tradition, and causes man not to heed God's instruction, and ultimately, to be destroyed. Following the Cold War, the poison of communism not only continued to harm former communist countries, but also spread throughout the world. The ideological infiltration of communism has led the specter to influence human society on a global scale, and many people even think that the dark wishes of communism are their own. With this, People lose their ability to judge right from wrong, to differentiate good from evil. This, a devil's conspiracy, was almost carried out. Thus, even as the specter congratulated itself, delighted with its sinister victory, most people thought that it had been destroyed. There's nothing more dangerous than mankind being on the verge of destruction, yet ignorantly celebrating its triumph. Two, the devil's ways and means. Man was created by God, and the compassion of God's has long protected man. This the devil knew, and so it set about severing this connection to corrupt man so that God's would no longer take care of him. The devil's approach has been to subvert the culture given to mankind by God's, corrupt human morality, and thus warp man and make him unworthy of salvation. The turbulence of Europe, beginning in the 18th century, and the attendant moral decline gave the devil an opportunity. It set about subverting, step by step, the criteria of discernment between good and evil. It promoted atheism, materialism, Darwinism, 
and the philosophy of struggle. The devil chose Marx as its envoy among men. Marx's Communist Manifesto of 1848 advocated the violent destruction of private enterprise, social classes, nations, religions, and the family. The Paris Commune of 1871 was its first attempt at seizing power. His followers argue that political power is the central question of Marxian political science. This is both true and not true. Being clear about the ultimate aims of communism means we can recognize that political power is both important and unimportant to the communist project. It is important in that access to political power allows a rapid means of the widespread corruption of humanity. With the levers of power, communists can promote their ideology with violence and eradicate a traditional culture in mere decades or years. Yet it is also unimportant in that even without the apparatus of the state, the devil has other means of exploiting the weaknesses and shortcomings of man. To deceive, co-opt, coerce, confuse, and so overturn traditional thought, subvert order, create upheaval, and to divide and conquer with the objective of gaining global control. Three, communism is the ideology of the devil. At the core of the evil specter is atheism and materialism, a confluence of elements from German philosophy, French social revolution, and British political economy assembled as a secular religion meant to replace the position previously occupied by God and orthodox beliefs. Communism turns the world into its church, bringing all aspects of social life under its purview. The devil chose Marx and others as its agents to oppose and destroy the principles laid down by God for human society. It promotes class struggle and the abolition of established social structures. In the East, it launched a violent revolution and established a totalitarian state that united politics and secular religion. In the West, it undertakes progressive, nonviolent communism through high levels of taxation and wealth redistribution. On a worldwide scale, it seeks to spread communist ideology to political systems everywhere, with the goal of undermining nation-states and establishing a global ruling body. This is the, quote, paradise on earth promised in communism, a supposed collective society without class, nations, or government, based on the principles of, quote, from each according to his ability and to each according to his need. In the Communist Manifesto, Marx proclaimed, quote, the communist revolution is the most radical rupture with traditional property relations. No wonder that its development involves the most radical rupture with traditional ideas. Thus, Marx himself accurately summarized the practice of communism over nearly the past two centuries. God is the source of moral order, and God's morality is eternal and unchanging. Moral standards should never be determined by man, nor can they be changed by man's power. Communism tries to sentence morality to death, and to have the communist new man establish a new morality. Yet, while it denies real morality, communism uses negative methods to expel from human tradition all its positive factors, with the goal of having negative factors occupy the world. Traditional laws come from morality and are intended to uphold morality. Communism tries to separate morality from the law, then destroys morality by concocting bad laws and maliciously interpreting traditional ones. God calls on man to be kind. Communism agitates class struggle and advocates violence and killing. God established the family as a basic social unit. Communism believes that the family is a manifestation of the private capitalist system and threatens to eliminate it. God gives man the freedom to obtain wealth and the right to life. Communism seeks to eliminate private property, expropriate assets, raise taxes, monopolize credit and capital, and completely control economic life. God established the form that morality, government, law, society, and culture should take. Communism seeks the, quote, violent overthrow of the whole existing social structure. God transmitted to man the unique form of traditional art as a means of passing on his image. 
Traditional art recalls to mankind the beauty of heaven, reinforces faith in God, elevates morality, and nurtures virtue. Communism, on the other hand, would have man worship warped modern creations, artistic productions that stifle our divine nature, give full rein to the demonic impulse toward chaos and disorder, and manipulate the art world by spreading base, ugly, malformed, evil, and decadent ideas. God wants man to be humble and full of reverence and wonder at divine creation. Communism connives at the demonic and arrogance in man, encouraging him to revolt against God by amplifying the evil inherent and inescapable in human nature. It exploits the idea of freedom to encourage conduct unrestrained by morality and unfettered by a sense of duty or burden. The slogan of equality is used to stir up envy and vanity as man is tempted by fame and material interests. Four, a metaphysical understanding of the devil. The idea of the devil being referred to in this text is that of a supernatural power. Understanding the type of thing that is the specter of communism is one of the keys to understanding the chaos the devil has sown in the world. Simply put, the specter of communism is composed of hate. It draws its energy from the hatred that wells up in the human heart. The communist specter is tied to Satan. Sometimes the two are indistinguishable, thus we will not make an effort to consider them separately. The devil's arrangements are present in both the East and the West, in every profession and in every walk of life. Sometimes its power is divided, sometimes integrated, sometimes it uses this tactic, sometimes that. It follows no simple pattern. The devil is the initiator of an unrestricted war on mankind that has turned religion, the family, politics, the economy, finance, military affairs, education, the academy, the arts, the media, entertainment, popular culture, social affairs, and international relations all into battlefields. The dark energy of the devil can spread from one sphere, group, or movement to another. After the anti-Vietnam War movement faded in the West in the 1970s, for instance, the devil manipulated rebellious adolescents to channel their energies into agitating for feminism, environmentalism, and the legalization of homosexuality. The devil's other efforts were used to subvert Western civilization from within. The devil can turn people with no good intent into its agents in the human world, using hypocrisy to deceive compassionate and innocent people who then become its apologists. The devil's agents, most of whom do not even realize their role, are everywhere in society, from the elite, to the middle class, to the lower classes. Thus, its activities manifest sometimes as bottom-up revolutions, sometimes as top-down conspiracies, sometimes as reforms from the center. The devil can change forms and exist in multiple places at once. It uses lowly beings and specters in other dimensions to do its work. Pornography and drug addiction are tools used by the devil. And as long as a person's thought aligns with these qualities, the devil can control that person. Many times people think they are acting according to their own thoughts, but they failed to realize they're being manipulated. Five, the devil's many faces. Just as the devil goes by many names, communism manifests in many ways. The demon uses contradictory positions to deceive. A totalitarian regime or a democracy, a planned economy or a market economy, control of the press or no restraints whatsoever on speech, opposition to homosexuality in some countries or legalization of homosexuality in other countries, wanton environmental destruction, or clamor for environmental protection, and so on. It can advocate violent revolution or embrace peaceful transition. It may manifest as a political and economic system or as an ideological trend in art and culture. 
It may take the form of pure idealism or cold-blooded scheming. Communist totalitarian regimes are just one of the demon's manifestations. Marxism, Leninism, and Maoism form just one aspect of the devil's fallacies. Since utopian socialism developed in the 18th century, the world has seen the emergence of numerous ideological currents. Scientific socialism, Fabian socialism, syndicalism, Christian socialism, democratic socialism, humanitarianism, eco-socialism, welfare capitalism, Marxism-Leninism, and Maoism. These ideologies are of two types, violent communism or nonviolent communism. The infiltration and gradual erosion of the status quo are the main tactics adopted by communism's nonviolent strains. One of the devil's deceits is to make arrangements in the two opposing camps of the East and the West. As it carried out a vast invasion of the East, it also took on a new guise and stole into the West. The Fabian Society of Britain, the Social Democratic Party of Germany, the Second International of France, the Socialist Party in the United States, and many other socialist parties and organizations spread the seeds of destruction to Western Europe and North America. During the Cold War, the slaughter, concentration camps, and famines and purges in the Soviet Union and China made some Westerners count themselves lucky that they still lived in luxury and freedom. Some socialists publicly condemned the violence of the Soviet Union on humanitarian grounds, which led many to let down their guard around them. The demon of communism inhabits a variety of complex guises in the West and operates under many banners, making it almost impossible to guard against. The following schools or movements were either derived from communism or used by communism to reach its ends. Liberalism, progressivism, the Frankfurt School, neo-Marxism, critical theory, the counterculture of the 1960s, the anti-war movement, sexual liberation, legalization of homosexuality, feminism, environmentalism, social justice, political correctness, Keynesian economics, avant-garde art schools, and multiculturalism. Six, socialism as the preliminary stage of communism. In the West, many look at socialism and communism separately, which provides fertile ground for socialism to flourish. In fact, according to Marxist-Leninist theory, socialism is simply communism's preliminary stage. In 1875, in Critique of the Gotha Program, Marx put forward the idea that there is an initial phase of communism, followed by an advanced phase. Compelled by changes in the international situation at the time, Friedrich Engels, in his later years, also proposed democratic socialism, in which votes were used to obtain political power. Democratic socialism was adopted by Social Democratic Party leaders and theorists of the Second International and led to the left-wing parties in many capitalist countries around the world today. Lenin set down clear definitions of socialism and communism. He considered socialism to be the preliminary phase of communism and communism to be developed on the basis of socialism. Thus, it is clear that socialism has always been a part of Marxism and the international communist movement. The public ownership and planned economy of socialism is part of the initial preparation for communism. Presently, while branches of socialism or left-wing doctrines popular in the West seem superficially unrelated to communism, they're simply communism's non-violent forms. Instead of violent revolution, votes are used to gain power in the West. Instead of outright public ownership, high taxation in Western countries serves the same role. Instead of a state-planned economy, Western social welfare systems are used to eat away at capitalism. Left-wing parties in Western countries consider social security and welfare systems to be an important aspect of realizing socialism. When condemning the crimes of communism, the violence and slaughter should not be the only focus. Communism in its nonviolent forms has deceived and bewildered people's minds under the guise of various branches of socialism. Some socialist or welfare states in the West today use the idea of the Commonwealth 
to sacrifice individual freedoms. Citizens in these countries retain certain political freedoms because the brand of socialism there has yet to be well developed. Socialist countries set equality of outcome as the primary goal, and thus they are bound to deprive people of their freedom. If a free country turned into a totalitarian regime overnight, the drastic contrast between propaganda and reality would leave most people shocked. Many would rebel, or at least passively resist. This would lead to high costs for totalitarian rule, and the regime would likely need to commit mass slaughter to eliminate the resistance. This is one of the main reasons that both the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China have engaged in the mass killing of their own citizens during peacetime. Unlike totalitarian regimes, socialism in democratic states slowly eats away at people's freedoms through legislation. Like the metaphor of the boiling frog, the process of establishing a socialist system takes decades or generations, leaving people gradually numb, oblivious, and accustomed to socialism, all of which enhance the deceit. The essence and objective of this type of gradual socialism are no different in substance from the violent form. Socialism uses the idea of guaranteeing equal rights through legislation, while in actuality, it drags down moral values and deprives people of the freedom to incline toward goodness. It's impossible to enforce equality by suddenly elevating those at lower levels, so instead, socialism artificially restrains those at higher levels, especially in terms of moral values. The socialism of the West uses pretexts like anti-discrimination, value neutrality, or political correctness to attack basic moral discernment. This is equivalent to an attempt to eliminate morality as such. This has come along with the legalization and normalization of all manner of anti-theist and profane speech, sexual perversions, demonic art, pornography, gambling, and drug use. The result is a kind of reverse discrimination against those who believe in God and aspire to moral elevation with the goal of marginalizing and eventually getting rid of them. Seven, the romanticization of communism. To this day, there are numerous Westerners who harbor romantic fantasies about communism, yet they've never lived in a communist country and experienced the suffering there, so they have no understanding of what communism actually means in practice. During the Cold War, many intellectuals, artists, journalists, politicians, and young students from the free world went to Russia, China, or Cuba as tourists and travelers. What they saw, or rather were allowed to see, was completely different from the lived reality of the people in those countries. Communist countries have perfected their deception of foreigners. Everything the foreign visitors saw was carefully crafted for their tastes, including the model villages, factories, schools, hospitals, daycare centers, and prisons. The receptionists they encountered were members of the Communist Party or others considered politically reliable. The tours were rehearsed, the visitors were greeted with flowers, wine, dancing and singing, banquets, and smiling young children and officials. Then they were taken to see people hard at work, able to talk freely and as equals, students studying hard, and lovely weddings. What they didn't get to see were the show trials, mass sentencings, mob lynchings, struggle sessions, kidnappings, brainwashing, solitary confinement, forced labor camps, massacres, theft of land and property, famines, shortages of public services, lack of privacy, eavesdropping, surveillance, monitoring by neighbors and informants everywhere, brutal political struggles in the leadership and extravagant luxuries of the elite. They especially weren't able to see the suffering of ordinary people. The visitors mistook what had been staged for them as the norm in a communist country. They then promoted communism in the West through books, articles, and speeches, and many of them didn't know they had been taken in. A small number did see cracks in the edifice, but many of them then fell into another trap. They saw themselves as, quote, fellow travelers, and adopted the Chinese attitude of, quote, not airing dirty laundry in front of outsiders. Lacking the courage to tell the truth, they chose a shameful silence. 
everyone is, quote, free and equal, where there is no oppression or expropriation, where there's great material abundance, where everyone gives according to their ability and receives according to their need, a heaven on earth, with every individual able to develop himself or herself freely. A human society of this sort exists only as fantasy, and that fantasy has been used as bait by the devil to deceive man. In reality, power falls in the hands of a small elite. Real communism is a totalitarian apparatus controlled by a small group who use their monopoly on power to suppress, enslave, and deprive the majority. Eight, the devil's destruction of culture and morality. Communism teaches people to oppose belief in God and to cast out the divine. It simultaneously launches attacks on religions from the outside while manipulating people to corrupt religion from the inside. Religions have been politicized, commercialized, and turned into entertainment. Numerous morally corrupt clergymen put forward fallacious interpretations of religious texts misleading their followers and going so far as to commit adultery with their lay members or even pedophilia. This chaos has left sincere religious believers bewildered and deprived of hope. Just a century ago, an unwavering belief in God was a sign of moral decency. Now, religious believers are considered foolish and superstitious. They keep their beliefs to themselves, not even discussing their faith among friends for fear of being mocked. Another important goal of communism is the destruction of the family. Using ideas like gender equality and, quote, sharing wealth and wife, the 20th century in particular was host to modern feminist movements that promoted sexual liberation, the blurring of gender differences, attacks against the so-called patriarchy, and weakening the role of the father in the family. They changed the definition of marriage promoted the legalization and legitimization of homosexuality, promoted the rights to divorce and to abortion, and used social welfare policies to effectively encourage and subsidize single parenthood. All of this resulted in the collapse of families. This has been one of the more startling transformations of society over the last several decades. In the political sphere, communism exploited loopholes in the legal and political systems of democratic nations in an attempt to manipulate major political parties. For electoral victory, politicians resorted to dirty tricks and made promises that they could never fulfill. The result of the influence of communism is that political parties around the world are often somewhere on the left of the political spectrum, advocating higher taxes, higher social welfare expenditures, big government and interventionism, all of which they seek to entrench in legislation. And with a left-leaning government, leftist ideology comes to infiltrate the entire society, backed up with the indoctrination of youth who in turn come to elect more left-leaning candidates. The academy, which is supposed to play the role of transmitting the essence of the wisdom and culture of the ages, has also been subverted. In the first half of the 20th century, the communist specter arranged for the systematic destruction of the education system. China famous for its profound ancient culture, was subjected to the new culture movement even before the establishment of the Communist Party. This was part of the effort to disconnect the Chinese people from their traditions. After the Communists seized power, they nationalized the education system and filled the textbooks with party ideology, transforming generations of young Chinese into ferocious, quote, wolf cubs. In the West, the specter launched the progressive education movement, using the banner of science and progress in order to gain control of philosophy, psychology, pedagogy, and eventually the entire academy, and thus brainwash teachers and education administrators. High school education began excluding orthodox ideas and traditional morality. Academic standards were lowered to make students less literate and math savvy, and less able to form their own judgments and use common sense. Atheism, the theory of evolution, materialism, and the philosophy of struggle were all instilled in students. Following the counterculture of the 1960s, advocates of political correctness have become thought police, forcing teachers to indoctrinate students with all manner of twisted ideas. 
Students now graduate from school without a strong moral compass, with no foundation in their own culture, lacking common sense and a sense of responsibility, and are left to blindly follow the crowd, thus joining society's downward trend. Out in society, there is drug abuse, rising rates of crime, a media sphere full of sex and violence, an art world that treats grotesquery as beauty, and all manner of evil cults and occult groups. Young people blindly adore film and television stars, waste their time on online games and social media, and end up dispirited and demoralized. The senseless violence of terrorism against innocence violates all moral parameters established by tradition and makes people worry desperately about the security of the world and what the future holds. Nine, return to God, restore tradition, escape the devil's plan. Human civilization was transmitted to man by gods. Chinese civilization has seen the prosperity of the Han and Tang dynasties, and Western civilization reached its peak during the Renaissance. If human beings can maintain the civilization that gods gave to them, then when gods return, man will be able to maintain a connection with them and understand the law that they teach. If humans destroy their culture and tradition and the morality of society collapses, then when gods return, people will fail to understand their divine teachings because their karma and sins are too great and their thinking has departed so far from the instructions of the divine. This is dangerous for mankind. Communism is a scourge of humanity. Its goal is the destruction of mankind and its arrangements are meticulous and specific. The conspiracy has been so successful that it has almost been carried out to completion. And now the devil is ruling our world. The ancient wisdom of mankind tells us this. One righteous thought conquers 100 evils, and when a person's Buddha nature emerges, it shakes the world in 10 directions. The devil seems powerful, but it is nothing before God. If humans can maintain their sincerity, kindness, compassion, tolerance, and patience, they will be protected by God, and the devil will have no dominion over them. The mercy of the Creator is limitless, and every life has a chance to escape catastrophe. If humankind can restore tradition, elevate morality, and hear the compassionate call of the Creator and the heavenly law that provides salvation, man will be able to break through the devil's attempt at destruction, embark on the road to salvation, and move toward the future.